Hi, Mike's Carburetor Parts here. In this video, I'm going to explain how carburetor jets work, when to change them, how to measure jets, and what to do if you can't find jets for your carburetor. I'm using a, a Motocraft 2100 uh, as an example. Um, this video will be more generic than anything on jets, but uh, most of the information you can use on any carburetor. Um, this is a, the jet I took out, and it fits right down in here at the bottom of the bowl in this particular one. Uh, first of all, what are carburetor jets? Well, in simple terms, jets are small threaded plugs, as you see here, with a tiny metering orifice. You see, look right in the middle. Uh, throughout its center that control the amount of fuel entering the carburetor's venturi. Uh, they're considered metering components, usually made from brass. Uh, the diameter of the main jet metering orifice orifice, <laughs> excuse me, determines the fuel flow rate, uh, hence the slightest difference could alter the air fuel mixture. Although uh, jets, carburetor jets, uh, do come out of the box pre-calibrated for uh, uh, normal conditions, it can be re replaced if necessary with another jet uh, with a different diameter. How do they work? Well, um, as air goes down through the carburetor venturi, It creates a low pressure zone uh, at its thinnest point where the main jet is located and the vacuum pulls atomized fuel from the fuel bowl through the jet's metering orifice in a small hole. Allowing it to mix with air at the venturi creating one homogeneous air fuel mixture. Um, since jets are responsible for allowing fuel passing from the bowl to the throttle bores, their diameter has a direct impact on fuel flow. A larger diameter will enrich air fuel mixture while a jet with a smaller diameter will have the opposite effect creating a lean air fuel mixture. So when do you change jets? Well, as I mentioned earlier, carburetors are calibrated at the factory for optimal, optimal performance under normal conditions. Uh, and what are normal conditions? For most manufacturers, uh, the normal conditions are about 70 degrees Fahrenheit at sea level. And this means that depending on the area where you live, you might need to change your jet size. Moreover, there are additional factors that might force you into changing jet sizes. Some of these factors uh, are, are as follows. Uh, the weather, higher or lower ambient temperature, humidity levels. Uh, wouldn't worry about that too awful much unless you're in some uh, extreme weather all the time. That weather just does change so you know what's good today is not good tomorrow. Uh, barometric pressure, higher or low altitudes. Now that's what we run into mostly um, when people want to change jets. Jets generally are good. Your jet size is good up to 5,000 feet. Anything over that is probably going to require you to change your jet size to a smaller size. And uh, otherwise you're going to run too rich. And running too rich, uh, you know, fouls your plugs. Uh, it's going to uh, wear your engine abnormally. Just as a lean condition, lean condition is even worse. Uh, if you're too lean, you're going to wear your engine out. So uh, upgrades your to upgrades on your engine uh, will affect may, may require new jets. Uh, the cam profile, cylinder heads, uh, performance intake manifold, turbo or supercharger, something like that. A change of the exhaust system headers, low restriction exhaust system, open exhaust might require uh, uh, different jets. And uh, normal wear, wear over time, uh, this is seldom an issue because jets don't wear from normal use. They're uh, um, made out of brass, most all of them. There's a few steel ones around, but uh, um, and you can see the hole is protected in there so even even if you mess it up with a screwdriver and these are often uh, kind of chewed up out on the outside here from uh, using the wrong size screwdriver like this one see it's too small uh, this one is better 
because it fits the whole thing. Um, but a little bit of, uh, if you mess it up a little out here, it's not going to hurt it. It's the orifice that makes all the difference. So there you go. So the logical question is, uh, how can you possibly determine if changing the main jet is really necessary? And uh, how, how to know if it would be necessary a smaller or larger diameter? Well, here's a tip for you that can assist in answering those questions, uh, which consists of reading the spark plugs. When the carburetor is properly tuned, spark plugs should be completely dry and have a light brown tan color. Uh, when spark plugs show that condition, what they are telling you is that their fuel mixture is adequate. Leave them alone. Don't change the jets. Thinking you're going to get better performance just by making the hole bigger. Ain't going to happen. You're going to ruin your engine. On the other hand, a spark plug with uh, bright white ceramic or the electrode is indicative of a lean... Excuse me, I'm sorry. On the other hand, a spark plug with uh, bright white ceramic and or an electrode is indicative of a lean condition, meaning that you need to increase the jet size. And usually increasing... Uh, 0 0.002, that's two thousandths inch, is a good starting point. Um, however, uh, you will need to test the vehicle and check again to verify the air fuel mixture is correct. Poor for performance from the uh, engine electrical system can also affect the spark plug burn. So make sure your electrical system is up to par. Uh, don't start with the carburetor. That's the last thing you want to uh, look at. People uh, blame the carburetor first, and it should be the last thing. It's usually electrical. So if your plugs aren't don't look so good, uh, make sure you're not. Uh, uh, one thing, maybe make sure the plugs aren't bad. Uh, maybe you need new plugs, so they do wear out. So increasing the jet size allows more fuel to reach the venturi here. Thus, you're compensating uh, for the lean condition. Notice, though, that a vacuum leak, a faulty fuel pump, or a clogged fuel filter may also cause a lean condition. So be sure you check those issues first. Uh, even a float level uh, could cause a bit of a lean condition, or rich condition, too, if the float level's off too far. And, as I mentioned before, lean condition can be especially bad for your engine wear. It doesn't take long to ruin your engine if you're running lean. <laughs> and what about a rich condition when the spark plug is black, like covered by soot, and it's not completely dry, it usually smells of gas, uh, then you have a rich condition. Fixing a rich mixture can be fixed by decreasing the jet size by 0.002. And we say uh, jet size, we're talking about the orifice size in the middle. And the same as before, uh, you will need to perform a complete test drive between each check. And please notice that ignition problems could cause this condition, as I mentioned before. So check your part plug wires, your distributor cap rotor, and your ignition coil. When performing test drives between checks, try to do it at cruising speed of 35 miles per hour or more uh, for several miles. Uh, Probably around uh, 20 minutes of driving would be good. Uh, this ensures uh, proper spark plug readings, okay? And, of course, uh, uh, you're going to get some black plugs if your engine is cold and you check them right away. Uh, probably going to be uh, a little rich. If you're driving a, a V-shaped engine, V6, V8, uh, then uh, check a plug from each side of the engine to obtain... Uh, good results okay and where is the jet size found well usually jet size is engraved on the surface now in this motorcraft now this particular jet has no no markings on it but the motorcraft are often uh, stamped on the side sometimes on the top and for example uh, uh, if it said 50 F uh, Ford usually puts like an F at the end of the number that's 50 thousandths. That's 0 .050. That's what that means. So if you see that, uh, that's what you need. 
Okay, so so you need to figure out how to measure your jet. So since jets define the aspect, define an aspect is its diameter. You will find uh, special jet size gauge tools on the market. Depending on the carb manufacturer, uh, the gauge tool may measure millimeters or thousands of an inch. You may have to look around a little bit. We use a jet sizing tool. We have a set of tools, a go, no go gauge that just simply are machined uh, metal posts that you stick into the center of the jet to measure it. And that's how we do it. That can get expensive buying a big set just to measure one jet. Uh, but there's some on the market that uh, you could probably find that will have uh, several jet sizes uh, on one tool. Sometimes there's a tapered tool. Uh, even if you end up having to get the uh, metric type, uh, that will get you pretty close. You just have to convert the uh, metric measurement to uh, inches, and that that's not a big deal. And, and just get it really close, close as you can, within millimeter, of course. So you can do that. That's a possibility. Um, and the other possibility is to send your jet into us we'll measure it for you uh, and maybe with instructions you want bigger or smaller or whatever okay we also sell jets and sets um, you can buy you know just two jets for this you can if you want to fiddle with it you can buy a set of jets of 10 10 different sizes and uh, try each one okay so where do you buy jets you buy them at Mike's Carb Parts. That's uh, M-I-K-E-S-C-A-R-B dot com. Mike's Carb dot com. Okay. What if you can't find jets? Uh, a lot of jets uh, are not made anymore. So uh, what are you going to do if you can't buy one? In particular, a lot of the metrics aren't available. Um, and uh, anyway, so what you can do if you need to go to a bigger size you simply uh, drill the hole bigger uh, have a good set of drill bits by the way just drill the hole bigger um, two thousandths at a time and if you need to make the hole smaller uh, the trick is to solder the hole shut Oops. and uh, and then re-drill it and you can solder, re-drill it as uh, many times you want until you get get it dialed in. That's about the only thing you can do if uh, if you can't find a jet. Okay. Okay. So I hope that gives you some insight on jets. As I mentioned, don't change jets. Just thinking you're going to get some higher performance. Make sure you do all the checks so that you don't ruin your engine. Okay, I thank you for watching this. See you later.